The CRISPR analyzer offers you web-based interface for a full exploratory and interactive analysis. It features a couple of sections such as the setup your screen section where you can upload the data and set the parameters, the screen quality section with different plots and tables about the screen quality, the hit calling section where actually up to eight different hit algorithms analyze your data, the hit confirmation section with in-depth information about your favorite gene and its gRNAs, and last but not least, report section. You can find help as well in the Google group with help pages, and of course download the software. Let's start. So once you head for the first site, which is the data upload, you are asked to upload two files. First, ASGRNA library file in FASTA format. Just select the FASTA file, which should be formatted like this. If you have some commonly used libraries, for example those that are available at Edgene, just head to the help on the top of the page and download the pre-made FASTA files that we offer you. Once this is uploaded, you need to select the regular expression that detects what is the gene and what is the sgRNA identifier in your library file. Usually it's fine with the default values, but we have also several other values here for you. More information can be found in the help section, if you like. If you select the wrong one, CRISPR Analyzer will tell you right away. So, we select the correct one, which is the standard one. Once you uploaded this file, you can go and upload your sequencing data. The sequencing data can be uploaded either as already calculated read count files or as NGS raw data. Please make sure that when you upload read count files, the read count files map perfectly fine to your library file. If this is the case, you can upload the read count files with the same sgRNA identifiers that are present in the sgRNA library file. If this is not the case, please upload the raw data so that the CRISPR analyzer can map it for you. Hit the command button to upload several of them. And then you have the chance to just rename the files. So after you've renamed everything, you go to the last step, which is the FASTQ quality settings. In this case, we upload the read count files, so we don't need it. And then we go for check files, and CRISPR analyzer so will check that everything is fine. It also tells you how long it expects to take. After the CRISPR analyzer is finished with the data handling and the upload of files, you can go on and set the parameters of the screen. This you can do just in the next tab. So we are now in the Upload Your Data tab. And once this is uploaded, you can also look at Review to check out how many samples you uploaded, how many sgRNAs are in the library. And you can download your read count files. If you just upload the read count files, this doesn't make much sense, but still you can do it. And if you have uploaded raw sequencing data, you can download the quality report here. Since we have not uploaded raw data, there will be no quality report. Here you can see which files you've uploaded, what name you gave them, and what kind of type they are. In this case, those are read count data. Okay, so we go on to the set groups and gene identifier tab to start setting up our screen. Again, here in this first step, you need to set up which treatment groups you have. You can set up several treatment groups, but you can always compare only two groups at the same time. If you need help, you can click on the help section here, where it is shown basically what you can do. Okay, so in our case, we have two different treatment groups. You can increase them to three, or we'll go back to two again. And our untreated group we call the so-called PBS group and our treated group is the one that have been treated with TRADL. 
As a next step, we have to assign which of the uploaded files belongs to which group. So group 1 is our PBS group and group 2 down here is the trial group. That's quite easy, so we hit the control or command button to have multiple selections and we select either the PBS or the trial files to assign to the group. As a next step, CRISPR Analyzer offers to convert gene identifiers. You can select between human, mouse and zebrafish organisms and in our case the sgna library file contains ensemble gene IDs. There are other files like the TKO library where you have human genome nomenclature gene symbols, which would be this. If you don't want to convert your file, you just select both times the same symbol and so CRISPR analyzer will not convert anything. In our case, ensemble gene IDs are not so handy, so we, I would like to have them converted to the G human gene symbols. With set groups, I'm done and I have successfully set two groups. You can always change the setup by clicking on change setup and modify parts in here. You can only go on if you have clicked set groups and then we can go on to the analysis parameters and define what CRISPR analyzer should do with our software. Again here, head up for the help if you need additional information, for example, what analysis methods are included and what they do. And Again, here you have different steps to take. First steps, if you have controls, you can put them in here. Controls can be the gene identifier that you used. In our case, our gene identifiers, we included them as gene symbols, are caspase 8 and FAT, and the gene identifier in our case for non-targeting controls is called random. If you type something wrong, CRISPR Analyzer will tell you that the enter gene symbol is not present in your library. After setting up the controls, which is, which is optional, you can adjust the hit calling thresholds for individual methods. This is divided into differential analysis and essential gene analysis in principle. What you can do here is you can set different p-values for Wilcox, DSEC, SGRCA, MAGIC and Azure. And the same for ScreenBeam and Bagel. Please note that Bagel only works um, with whole genome data sets. The ScreenBeam analysis takes really some time, so you need to specifically activate it if you want to have it analyzed, your data. Once you set the thresholds, you select which samples you would like to compare. So in our case, you want to compare the trail group as our treatment versus PBS of our own treatment group. You can always come back to this section and change your parameters and rerun an analysis without uploading the data again. As a last step, CRISPR Analyzer offers you to remove sgRNAs from the analysis that either have a really low read count or a high read count or lower and higher read count. So you can go and say, please, I would like to remove all sgRNAs that have a read count below 20 and all that have a higher read count, let's say, than 10,000. And then you can select whether it should look for all data sets that you've uploaded for it, or just for the in the PBS group or the trail group. In this case, you can specifically um, alter your data set for better performance. In our case, I don't want to have anything removed, and CRISPR Analyzer at the end tells you the minimum expected time to check and analyze your data. This highly depends on the computing power of your system and is just a rough estimate. By clicking on Start Analysis, the analysis will start in the background and CRISPR Analyzer will tell you via this progress bar that the analysis is going on. Please be patient as some of the steps take some time. So this is the minimum expected time. Depending on the computer speed, it can be sometimes even more. So can you you can just wait here and see now it's converting the gene identifiers, performing the screen quality calculations and then going on to the hit calling performance. At the end, once this progress bar is at 100%, analysis is done and you can go on with the next step.